off for next week, so questions. How long have you been sitting on the uh, trick play that Smith uh, ended up turning into a touchdown? A while. We've been practicing that a while. Could you explain it to us? Because it was kind of hard to see from where we were at. I mean, Could you explain the play to us? Where we, where we were at, we couldn't really see. Yeah. Um, you know, basically, we had uh, Brian Smith and, you know, right behind the offensive guard. <clears throat> the offensive line stood up uh, up in the air. Then we ran a play that was a, you know, a short yardage play that we'd been running. And uh, then Brock <coughs> slipped the ball to Ryan. Ryan paused. Brock continued one way. Ryan paused. And did you see anything in preparation this week that you would have thought you were a 21 to 3 man? No, I thought it'd be a closer game. Uh, and some of it certainly plays like we just talked about had an impact, but um, you know, felt pretty good at, uh, at halftime, 21 to 3, but we certainly didn't get cut off. You held Zenner to 46 yards rushing, combined 85 for the entire season. Give me your thoughts on holding the top rusher to that. Well, I think, uh, first of all, really credit our defensive staff. Our, our coaches have done a great job scheming it up to make sure that he didn't have any place to run. I thought our defensive line did a super job maintaining the line of scrimmage and the linebackers played real discipline. And you know, where the runs had popped out against Eastern Illinois, we made sure that we had somebody there and not only one man, but typically there wasn't going to be much room for him to run. And uh, that was going to be a critical uh, part of this game plan take him out of the out of the equation and force him to throw the football that we felt like that wasn't something that they wanted to do consistently. Coach talk about Garrett Brown a guy who's been hurt most of the year, gets two touchdowns, especially one early. I mean just talk yeah. about one of your two seniors. Well it was great to have him back. Garrett brings such a, a great presence to our, our team. He was selected as a captain and you know, the guy that's kinda of had nine lives and keep on saying he can't play anymore <laughs> and yet he keeps on coming back. And, He'd been frustrated. He tried it a couple weeks ago and just wasn't at full speed. I don't know if he's at full speed yet, but uh, certainly uh, it was super to have him out there. And then it was you know, those two plays, uh, catching two uh, touchdowns. So many times he described himself as an old plow horse. You know, I'm just a blocker. And uh, he certainly wasn't just a blocker today. Can Rocket help you? Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about what his effect was on today? I thought any time you've got two two running backs in there that uh, run a little bit differently than two fresh guys. And John was able to make a couple plays when they had guys at the point of attack and our, our offensive line and the fullbacks and tight ends did a nice job blocking for them. Coach, can you talk about in the second half, kind of peeled things back, played more of the possession game. Uh, you know, things kind of slowed down. Was that part of the plan? Well, without question. I mean, you I mean, got the number one defense in the country up by that number of points, you're going to make sure that, you know, the only way I, I, I look is that South Dakota State can get back in the ball game is, you know, if we if we have some turnovers uh, and real, real negative field position. And so, you know, we purposely did that. And, uh, you know, and South Dakota State played well. I thought they, they continued to play hard. But uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, we weren't putting ourselves in a tough position. Like I said, we're going to leverage our defense, make sure that the opponent has to play the long field, because nine times out of ten, we're going to come up on the winning end. Seems like you got really creative with the play calling in that first half. The first Bruin touchdown was off some sort of play action. Obviously, mm -hmm. the uh, the Smith play was a right. kind of a, I don't know what you yeah, call we, it, trick we, play. Without question, we utilized this open week and uh, installed some things, and I think I did a nice job scheming some things up. Yeah, I thought, you know, the offensive staff and, and uh, Brent Vegan can really be credited uh, with a lot of those plays, Eric, because they were, they were different plays, and uh, they were very successful on calls in a timely fashion. Coach, you got, Car you got Carson on a couple times mm -hmm. at wide receiver. We can maybe see more of that as you go along? Well, we'll have to see where we're at next week. I think any time uh, you put two quarterbacks on the field, that opens up a whole, whole lot of different uh, uh, options. And... Uh, but uh, we'll see. Stay tuned. You have the punch. Yeah, I think we have. We're going to find out some more. Zach Colvin um, has got a, uh, a broken wrist. Um, I think there's some other guys that you know have got some sprains. Uh, Brock Jensen's. I think they're looking at his non-throwing hand or something. I don't know if it's a strained ligament in that or something like that. We'll find out a little bit more about that probably tomorrow. Concern that we could hold him off. 
but we'll find out. You know, I certainly, yeah, I know they're looking at it. That's all I can tell you, Jeff. Craig, that'll you probably spur a bunch of calls tomorrow. But. Yeah. Craig, you had to fake punt in the championship game last year. Mm -hmm. This is that play today. Is there a secret one to dip into those bag of tricks? Well, I think some of them just come about the time of the fashion. You know, this has been a, a play that we've been practicing, and you know, the one thing that you can probably count on with South Coast State is they're going to do their due diligence and look at all our tape and see the situation. And we've been running a you know sprint option in that situation, so it was, I thought, a, a pretty timely call. It certainly a, wasn't by me. That, 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 that one was not by me. You have a name for that play? Uh, yeah, but I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> was that the Joel Theismann play? What's that? Did you run the Joel Theismann play? No, we did not run the Joel that, Theismann That wasn't the Joel Theismann That was not the Joel Theismann play. You've outscored opponents 113 to 24 here at home in the last two years in the playoffs. Well, you're a heck of a guy on stats. I try that. Yeah. Tell me why you think the dominance is here. What do you think the one reason why you play so well here at home? Well, I'd like to really credit our fans. I mean, I thought the, the crowd noise today was exceptional and that had, a, that had, an, had an impact on our defensive guy. It was, it was somewhat difficult, but certainly, yeah, I think helps disjoints an offense. So, and our players play well at home. I mean, we're excited about that. And this was a big ball game. I mean, our guys are, are, are vets at the playoffs. And, you know, they there was just a different look in their eye. Once we got into postseason play, uh, they're kicking it into a different gear. And, uh, you know, South Dakota State was going to be a tough opponent, and they knew it, and our guys came ready to play today. Coach, is that what you attribute the, you know, the, the teams were fairly similar uh, from a physical standpoint the last meeting, but today you guys seem to have the physical advantage. Is, is that kind of what you're talking about in the playoffs? There was just a different different sense of, of, about your guys? Um, well, I can tell you a bye week does help. You know, there were some guys that had been playing that we were able to excuse from practice. I mean, they were out there, but uh, that had an impact. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we were able to practice against South Dakota State uh, with a couple practices. And then I do think, uh, you know, we've got a uh, saying in our locker room, to start strong, finish stronger. And that can be attributed by our strength and conditioning, the nature of the football team that we have. Every year we've gotten in postseason play, I think we've gotten better and better and better. And we'll help us to do that this year. For about one more question. Do you know anything about Wofford? Yeah, quite a bit. I know that punt that we have has come from there. I know that they run triple option football. I know they're from Spartanburg, South Carolina. And I know they're the Terriers. 